Today I've got a nice integral for you. So we're going to calculate the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cosine x over x squared plus 1. And I think maybe calculating this using methods only with real numbers would be quite complicated. So we're going to use complex analytic methods. And if you haven't seen these methods, well, maybe you want to check out my full course in complex analysis, which is at my second channel math major. So it starts at the definition of complex numbers and it works all the way up to the point where we can apply complex analysis to solve these kind of integrals or to evaluate these types of integrals, I should say say. Okay, so we're going to start by writing this improper integral as the limit of an integral over a finite region. So for us, I'm going to take this and write it as the limit as something I'll call capital R goes to infinity of the integral from minus R up to positive R of the cosine x over x squared plus 1 dx. And this might seem a little bit worrying to you because generally when we have improper integrals that are infinite in both directions, we can't do this kind of thing right here where we write a single limit. We have to break it into two limits. But this isn't quite as sketchy as it might seem in this case because we have an even function. So that re really means that this integral is equal to twice the integral from zero to infinity. And so this is actually legit in this case. So now from here, we're going to look at this portion that we have as just a single part of an integral that's happening in the complex plane. So what's that integral in the complex plane? Well, it's over a pretty commonly used contour for calculating integrals like this. So let's think about this as being the complex plane. We'll go over here to r, back here to minus r, and then up here to i times r. So let's just recall that this is the real axis. So I'll just say r e of z maybe. And this is the imaginary axis. So that's i m of z. And so we're going to integrate from obviously minus r to positive r. So that would be this integral that we have. And then after we've integrated from minus r to positive r, we'll integrate over a semicircle, which links back through i r back to minus r. So it'll be this semicircle right here. Okay, great. And what we'll do is call this region that is bound by this semicircle dr. So let's call that dr. And then this yellow curve is the boundary of dr. So we have boundary dr like that. And now before we look at this as a portion of an integral over this region right here, or this closed curve, I should say, we're going to do one more thing, which is fairly typical when looking at integrals of rational functions that combine trig functions. And instead of looking at cosine of x, we're going to look at e to the i x, keeping in mind that e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. But clearly, if we're looking at e to the i x, we need to take the real part to make sure that we get the cosine of x in the end. Okay, so that's looking good now. Now, I'll rewrite this by taking the real part out front of everything. So the real part function is a continuous function, so we can take it outside of a limit. That's no problem. And then we'll have the limit as r goes to infinity of the integral over this entire curve. So this curve, which I'm calling boundary dr. So let's write that. So we've got the integral over boundary dr. It's a closed curve, so I'll put my little circle there. And then I have e to the iz over z squared plus 1 dz. But the problem here is that this integral not only includes this part of the real axis down here, but it also includes this semicircle. So let's maybe give this semicircle a name. So we've called this entire thing boundary of dr, but let's call this semicircle maybe cr. So that means we've added that in by taking this integral. So that means we need to subtract it out. So this is going to be minus 
the integral over CR of the same thing. So e to the iz over z squared plus 1 dz. So something like that. So let's maybe close this up and keep in mind that my limit is attacking both of these integrals. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I can use something called the Cauchy residue formula in order to calculate this integral very, very easily. And how we calculate it is by calculating the residue of all of the singularities of this function that lie within dr. But there's exactly one of those singularities and it's at i. And that's because this function z squared plus 1 is equal to 0 at i and at minus i. And obviously the i is the only one that is included in dr. So just to reiterate, here we have the real part of the limit as r goes to infinity of 2 pi i times the residue of our function e to the i z at z squared plus 1 at i. So that's our function. And then minus, maybe I'll bring this limit through again, the limit as r goes to infinity of the integral over CR of e to the iz over z squared plus 1 dz. So we have something like that. Great. So now we have two things to do. We need to find this residue right here. And after we found that residue, we need to do something with this leftover bit. So let's first calculate this residue. So there's a formula that I built in these course videos that I was talking about that tells us that this residue is exactly equal to the limit as z approaches i of z minus i times e to the i z over z squared plus 1. That being said, the nice thing is, is we can write this z squared plus 1 as z minus i times z plus i, thus allowing us to calculate this z minus i, or cancel that z minus i. And then if we let z approach i, this thing turns into e to the minus 1, and then this thing right here turns into 2 times i. Okay, nice. The important thing to notice is that does not depend on r, so that means we can essentially get rid of this limit. So that gives us the real part of, so we have 2 pi i times this residue. We just calculated this residue to be e to the minus 1 over 2i. So that's nice, that's easy to calculate. And then left over is the limit as this r goes to infinity of the integral over cr of e to the i z over z squared plus one dz. And I guess I should say we're still taking the real part of this. Okay. So maybe before we move on to the next board, let's notice that a 2 here cancels with the 2 here. The i here cancels with the i here, and we're left with a real number. So if we take the real part of a real number, we obviously just get that real number, which in this case is pi over e. So we're left with pi over e minus the real part of the limit as r goes to infinity of the integral over cr of e to the i z over z squared plus 1 dz. Okay, so now let's bring this up to the top and we'll finish it off. Here's where we ended the last board. Now what we'll end up doing is actually showing that this limit is equal to zero, thus our final answer will be pi over e. But in order to do that, we need to do a little bit of a calculation based on the bound of this thing right here. So let's notice what's going on on CR. We'll notice CR is a top half of a circle with radius R. So that means on CR, the modulus of Z is also always equal to R. Because again, we're on a circle with radius capital R. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. 
Another thing is that e to the iz, maybe the modulus of e to the iz is equal to the modulus of e to the i x plus iy. There we're rewriting iz as i times x plus iy, but that's going to be equal to the modulus of e to the ix times the modulus of e to the minus y. But now we know that the modulus of e to a strictly imaginary number is always one. That's because that puts us on the unit circle by Euler's formula. Then we have e to the minus y. But let's look at the values of y, in other words, the imaginary part of these complex numbers on CR. In fact, they're always positive. So that means we have e to negative a positive number. In other words, we have an exponential of a negative number, which is always less than 1. So this thing right here is always less than or equal to 1. I guess it's exactly equal to 1 when we're at this end point here and this end point here. But other than that, it's strictly less. Okay, that takes care of the size of the numerator. Now, what about the size of the denominator? So the modulus of z squared plus 1. Now, using something called the reverse triangle inequality, we can say that this is bigger than or equal to the modulus of the modulus of z squared minus the modulus of 1, which is 1. But like we said before, on this circle of radius r, the modulus of z is always r. So this is exactly equal to r squared minus 1. We can get rid of that exterior absolute value because we can take r to be bigger than 1, given that we're taking the limit as r tends to infinity. Okay, so that's good. So now what does that say about this thing right here? Well, let's notice we've got the modulus of the integral over CR of e to the iz over z squared plus 1 dz is less than or equal to, using the triangle inequality for integrals first, the integral over CR of the modulus of e to the iz over the modulus of z squared plus 1 dz. But now the numerator is less than or equal to 1. The denominator is bigger than or equal to r squared minus 1. But since it's in the denominator, that will flip the inequality so they're both working in the right direction. And that means this whole thing is less than or equal to the integral over cr of 1 over r squared minus 1 dz. But now that's just a constant that we're integrating. So since it's a constant we're integrating, we end up with just the length of this curve. But this curve is exactly half of a circle of radius r. We know what the length of that is. That will be pi times r. So we have pi times r over r squared minus 1. What happens when we take the limit as r goes to infinity? So let's let r tend to infinity and we see that this goes to zero. So since the limit as r goes to infinity of the modulus tends towards zero, that means that the limit as r goes to infinity of this whole thing goes to zero. Which means in the end, we're left with just pi over e as our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.